Hey everybody, I'm Ryan Stroud with PC Perspective. It's time to talk about the mid-range VR build. And this is probably the one that I think will be most important to the most amount of people, right? This is kind of not the budget build, it's not the high-end build. Chances are more people's wallets will agree with the components we've selected for this build than maybe any other. Uh, let's start with obviously the processor. We're using Intel's highest end Skylake consumer part. This is the Core i7 6700K. This is a 600 or 600, $360 processor. It's quad core hyper threaded. It has a four gigahertz base clock. It goes up to 4.2 gigahertz with boost capability. It's unlocked so you can do all the overclocking that, you're, that you can do, that you can do with your motherboard. Uh, and in general, you'll be able to get 4.5, 4.6 out of this without really uh, much work. It has a 91 watt TDP. So uh, between our high end system and our budget system rests this in kind of all facets, be it price, power consumption, and performance. Still a, a really good processor that nobody's going to be disappointed in. Now what you're going to plug that processor into is the MSI Z170A Gaming M5 motherboard. This is a $200 motherboard, so fairly reasonably uh, priced. It supports both SLI and Crossfire, so if you want to add a second GPU to your system down the road, you have that capability. It has six SATA ports, two USB 3.1, four USB 3.1 Gen 1, which is really just USB 3.0 on the back there. It has two M.2 PCIe ports. So if you wanted to go down the road and you wanted to update to 950 Pro storage or M.2 storage that's coming out, you'll have that option. You can even run both of them at the same time. It has uh, killer networking on it. It's got Audio Boost 3 on it, which kind of has features like uh, gold audio jacks, isolated audio PCB, dual headphone amps. Uh, and it has a lot of overclocking capability in there as well. One touch overclocking, the BIOS and UEFI, UEFI is kind of well versed in all of that. It's a really good motherboard uh, that kind of fits in the middle of the MSI uh, roadmap, not roadmap, but product segmentation and uh, offers a lot for pretty much anybody in this price range. Uh, and memory wise, we are going to bump up from 8 gigs on the budget to 16 gigs. On this one, we're using the Corsair LPX DDR4 memory here, $79. $79 for 16 gigs of memory. Uh, that's actually a, a steal. Low profile, you know, it's not fancy heat sinks, doesn't have lights on it, but it's relatively high frequency and you have the capacity to basically do uh, anything you would want on this system, including high end video editing. But for gaming, not even a concern uh, at all. Now, the graphics card is very important, and in this case, we're going to match our MSI motherboard with an MSI video card. This is the GTX 980 4GB Gaming. Um, it is uh, an impressive cooler. It's a cooler that's been around for a little while now, a couple of generations on MSI's products. Uh, it keeps it very cool. It's got two fans on it. It uses a lot of heat pipes. Uh, we're talking about a $459 video card, so fairly reasonably priced, but as we've seen with all of our VR builds, the GPU is the most expensive component and it's also the most important when it comes to uh, you know determining your performance in VR gaming. It's got 2048 CUDA cores, it goes up to 1300 megahertz, uh, 4 gigs of memory, 175 watts or so TDP on this particular implementation because it is overclocked out of the box. And it has DVI, HDMI, and three DisplayPort connections on it, so you definitely need that HDMI connection uh, for connecting your Rift or Vive PC. Now storage, uh, we're going with the SATA hard drive, the Samsung 850 Evo 500 gig model this time. So we got a little bit more budget. It makes sense to increase the size of your SSD so you can store more games on it. You have to worry less about moving uh, data or games back and forth between the SSD and the hard drive, but definitely want to have an SSD and the biggest capacity you can afford works. Uh, this 500 gig model is now selling for 149 bucks. For $150, you can get a 500 gig 850 Evo, which is fantastic performance. We're talking 450 megabytes read, 520 megabytes per second write speeds, obviously at peaks, uh, but a great performer, great reliability, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of capacity there. If you need more capacity to store other games, other content, other media, uh, we would recommend going with a Seagate two terabyte drive. It's the cheapest you can get, $71. If you want to upgrade to a WD Red two terabyte, it's going to jump up to $88. So if you want to spend that extra 17 bucks, you can do that there. It's just basically storage for other Steam games, other content. Uh, and if you want to do a single drive or dual drives and RAID, uh, you have that, that option capability on that motherboard. Power supply, we are going with a Seasonic X650 Gold, it's over there in the corner. 650 watt power supply, very, very good build quality. A uh, great review from Lee on this entire series of power supplies. Um, it could support two, two, uh, two 980s if you want it to. So if you wanted to upgrade to SLI, you could do that. It's kind of right on the edge, but it, it can do it. 
Uh, and it's, like I said, high quality, high reliability, and that's really what you're after in a power supply. $129 for that particular unit. Uh, CPU cooler, we're going back to the oldie but goodie Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. It's a $29 cooler that's still, it's like 100 years this cooler has been the most popular uh, for system builders. Um, Four direct contact heat pipes can be used on basically any CPU platform. They've made adapters for, for everything. No issues at all using it on our Skylake platform. And then finally for our case, this guy over here is the Fractal Define, uh, Fractal Design Define S. Uh, we chose the black model with the window on it. Uh, Sebastian is a big fan of this chassis. Uh, I like kind of the uh, white accents on the inside of which you can see why we were illuminating some of it in there. It's a $110 case. Um, so again, pretty reasonably priced. Lots of water cooling support on the front, the top, the bottom, the sides. I don't know, not really on the sides, but you know, you get the point. Uh, two included fans, uh, pretty much all toolless construction, dust filters uh, for front and bottom intakes, no optical bays. So keep that in mind. If you know you need optical bays, this is not a case for you. But if you think opti optical bays are old school and you don't need them, like I do, then this case gives you a lot of room for other stuff with those uh, being removed from it. And plus, it has sound dampening material on every side, obviously, except for the side with the window. Uh, you can get this in a version that doesn't have a window that has sound dampening material on that side as well if you want to do it. So the total for all these components is $1,589. Again, pretty close to our target of $1,500. Prices will vary day to day depending on where you're looking. But $1,589 gets you, I think, uh, the most reasonably priced and performance per dollar system for a VR build going into winter and spring of 2016. So up next, we're going to put all this together, see how it performs, and uh, I'm prepared to be impressed. This VR build was straightforward, starting with the Core i7-6700K placement in the MSI Z170 motherboard and the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo cooler installation. 16 gigs of Corsair DDR4 memory snapped into place, and then we mounted the hardware into the Fractal Design chassis. Next, I installed the Seasonic power supply and placed the MSI GTX 980 graphics card in the top PCIe slot. Finally, I installed the hard drive and Samsung 850 EVO SSD on the other side of the case. Ran data and power cables. Well, there you have it. Our $1,500 VR system build is complete. Total cost, uh, as we record this, as we wrote this story up, is $1,589. So again, pretty close to our $1,500 mark. Uh, prices will fluctuate a little bit depending on when you read this uh, or view this video. So be, be uh, ready for that. But $1,589 is a, is a pretty good price point, I think, for a gaming PC and a VR PC that's going to give you a lot of life uh, for quite a while uh, going forward. If you add in the cost of the VR HMDs, obviously you are talking about a pretty expensive overall system and gaming rig um, if you got 600 bucks for the oculus or 800 bucks for the vive uh, but obviously you know that going into this if you're already to the process of building your pc now building inside this case and building the system was actually really really straightforward i like this case a whole lot um, the the ability to mount the storage only to the back of the, of the case it actually helps clean things up quite a bit. Uh, it's got pre-installed Velcro straps for cable management that I took advantage of. Um, and there's a lot of open space inside the case because there are no drive cages, all the hard drives get mounted to the back side of, uh, of the motherboard mounting tray. One caveat, obviously there's no optical drive support in this chassis. So if you know you need a Blu-ray drive, um, either for movies or for other types of things, if you use it for media backup, you will have to pick a different case. But I, I I think most of us are beyond that, probably, maybe, hopefully. Uh, so I really like this uh, this fractal design case. In terms of specifications, obviously all of the hardware we picked is well above uh, the minimum requirements for both Oculus and HTC for the Rift and the Vive. Uh, and I think that you know your Core i7 6700K, your GTX 980 is going to really give you a lot of legroom going forward for just PC gaming in general, whether that be at 1080p or 2560 by 1440, or if you want to stretch your legs and get up to one of those 21 by 9, you know, 3440 by 14 inch, uh, 3440 by 1440 uh, widescreen ultra wide displays. So you have a lot of headroom there in terms of specifications. When we looked at our performance tests, obviously uh, all good news there, Oculus text, 
uh, Oculus compatibility tool is green check marks straight down the line. And then our result from the Steam VR test was 8.8, .8, so improvement over our previous build of 7.1, so 8.8 .8 listed as very high, nearly at the maximum um, spot on the spectrum of red, yellow, green, right? So it was actually fairly far to the right on the green side. Um, so we're, you're kind of getting towards the highest point that the Steam VR test is able to measure. Not that that's, there's nothing higher performance, obviously, but just the highest performance that the Steam VR test is, uh, is willing to measure there. So I think with this build, $1,500 is a pretty modest starting point or a modest price point for a high-end gaming PC. It's a lot of money to invest in, but I think you guys are really gonna love it and you should have uh, quite a long headroom or a lot of headroom for uh, either VR or other PC gaming. Thanks, guys. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.